podcast where we focus on helping you claim what's rightfully yours, your health, and your freedom. We explore the three main areas of health, the physical realm, the biochemical realm, and the mental and emotional realm. We also explore all the areas of lifestyle we can find that will help you live more abundantly, regardless of where you're starting. And remember, in life, you'll either make excuses or create results. You choose. I'm your host, Dr. Josh Hant, and I'm glad to be with you here today. Make sure to head on down to the show notes and click on the link to join our tribe of human-powered life heroes, where we'll update you on new shows, events, product launches, and so much more. Now, it's time to enjoy the show. I'm Dr. Josh Hant. I want to welcome you back to the Human Powered Life Podcast. Today, let's talk about overwhelm. And yes, me, just like you, I could say suffer from overwhelm or actually create overwhelm in our lives. And could it be a good thing? Could it be a bad thing? Could it just be a thing? And and that's really for you to decide. And oftentimes, I bite, bite off more than I can chew. So they say, and I'll just give you a couple examples of, of how I do it in my life. And it can happen in business. It can happen in fitness. It can happen in any aspect of life. Overwhelm can show up. And oftenly, what most people do, what I have done, is we pause. The real world crawls at procrastination. When you have so much to do and you do nothing, almost like staring off into the sunset, not knowing where to start because there is so much to do. And, and if you even think about it, you can just point yourself in any direction and do something that will be proactive for you. So here's just a very simple example of how overwhelm can show up. And I'm just going to use myself as an example because we are currently in this process of, holy cow, there's so many things going on in our lives and my life at the same time. And it can be challenging to juggle. It can be confusing. And I'm going to show you hopefully a couple of tools you can use that may make this a whole lot easier. The overwhelm game doesn't have to be overwhelming to you. So here's a very simple example. We've been doing a lot of changes in our office from color to furniture to, we'll just call it a renovation, even though it's not a full-blown renovation. We're doing a lot of changes and a lot of updates. We'll call it that. That's happening. Working and shopping and all the different things that have come along with this. Second thing we're doing, we are changing some software in our office and the software, holy cow, going from one software to another can be very, very challenging, especially when the whole team needs to learn something that is brand new, especially when we, we've been using this other technology for more than a decade. So we have office changes, they're positive, software changes are positive, and to add the third thing to the mix, we've really invested in ourselves and our team, we are going to be sharing and helping people with neuropathy, which is very, very cool. I'm very, very pumped. And I think we're going to be starting within the next week or two. We've been training in the background for well over a month at this point. And I can tell you doing the neuropathy training, the office changes and upgrades, the software changes and upgrades all at the same time. Holy cow. We start throwing names around. We start talking. Nobody in the practice knows what which of the three things we're talking about. But it's like, did you do the thing? Did you do that thing? So it can get confusing and overwhelm can kick in at all different levels. And the overwhelm that I can create for myself can actually trickle and roll over to other people, which I don't want it to be overwhelming to them. I want to make it so we can lead people in a better direction when my overwhelm can actually trickle that in a bad way. I want to trickle it in a good way. So... A lot of different moving parts. We're very, very excited. I'm actually back training again, so I'm doing that. Not that that interferes with um, the the practice itself, but there's a lot of things going on. And yes, I do manage the Human Powered Life podcast as well. So you know, a lot of cool, crazy, fun things that are going on. So there are a couple of tools or a couple of things that I, Matt, use to manage this overwhelm. And the first is, is always the start to my day. And a couple of things that I think are so essential to the start of my day. Some of them may seem like super simple and stupid to some people, but I don't care because it really works for me. And maybe something like this may work for you. So the first thing I do when I'm up in the morning is I do a meditation. I use 
uh, something called brain tap. It allows me to get a really powerful, amazing meditation in, in a very short period of time, anywhere from 10 to 20, 25 minutes, we'll say max. I do that. I down a bottle of uh, 20 ounces of what we call uh, charged water. I don't have the water bottle here to show you, but it's from Lila Quantum Tech. So I drink this, this 20 ounce, I think it's 750 ml, 20 or 24 ounce bottle of water. I have my raw liver. And then I make myself a coffee, a what we call fat coffee, so a power coffee, collagen and uh, grass-fed butter and some caprylic acid, which are those MCTs. And I take that and I take my dog outside. Obviously, he's been fed at this point, but I take my dog right out in the backyard. I sit down in my robe, whether it's winter, summer, sometimes I'm sitting in shorts just outside and either watching the sunrise, just being patient, and I journal. So starting my day by doing things that are calming to my mind are very important. One thing that I don't do, that I do not do, it, it takes me some time, but now I have absolutely no issue doing it. I do not go on my phone and scroll social media first thing in the morning. I probably do, well, I'll say scroll, I'll probably go onto social media, check email, things like that. Probably where from like 45 minutes to 90 minutes plus into my day. Uh, because all it does is lets my mind calm and center. And oftentimes, either the night before that day, depending on, on what's going on, I'll just start to write my little list down. Okay, great, got these things. So the start of my day is really, really powerful, and it really helps ground me in, in, in these things that can happen and create overwhelm. So grounding yourself in the beginning of the day is powerful. And for me, one of my favorite things, I know it sounds nuts, is just sitting outside with my cup of coffee, being quiet, watching my dog run around, sniff, and do what he does in the yard. And it's, it's very, very peaceful. When I'm home, I also will automatically, after that coffee, will I'll throw a 50-pound ruck on my back, and we take the dog for a, a mile to two mile plus walk the days that I'm around. And I absolutely love it. It's so decompressing. It's a great start to the day. So I like starting grounded. That's very, very powerful. That would be my first recommendation when you sense yourself and overwhelmed during a week, a month, a day, whatever it may be, do your best to start that day grounded and calm. It'll be very, very good. Because what's going to happen is your head's going to be racing and running most of the day. So if you can not let it do that first thing in the morning, let everything charge up, you can actually have a more productive, proactive day. So the second tool that I really enjoy using is pen and paper. Right? Like I said, I like to write things down. So I will do that. When I, the days that I'm actually at home, I'll start to pro, prep and process my day on paper on a little notepad that I can just throw away that sheet. And similar to that, the digital version of what I use to keep track of the multiple projects I'm on is an application called Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O. And what this does, you can use something like that or you can even use Google Keep, which my wife and I will use that oftentimes for shopping lists, for, for groceries, for food. But Trello, what it allows me to do is to make little, if you will, folders. So I'll have the software folder. I'll have the office update folder. I'll have the, um, the neuropathy folder. And then each, in each of those folders, when you click the digital folder to open it up, I have checklists. I have due dates. I have all sorts of things. So I can actually now go, great, today is Tuesday. I know by Thursday, I have to have XYZ training done. We have to put together this bench for a room in the office. We have to hang three pictures, and we're going to train on the new software for at least one hour, all by Thursday. So a lot of this we know great is Tuesday. I have two days to start chunking these things down. And I'll tell you what, it's very neat using technology or a piece of paper where you can either cross, right? Like, you know, that, that sound at crossing off something off a list or hitting that checkbox and it puts a digital line through it for you is oddly, it feels good. It's oddly like calming. So when in overwhelm, try to chunk things down into lists because that will make Hey, life we're so giving you a short easier. break here where you can head down to the show notes or lifestylelocker.com and join our tribe of human-powered life heroes. You'll be the first to know about new shows, events, product launches, affiliate specials, and more. And now, back to the show. What I would also recommend, if you are not doing this yet, overwhelm is overwhelming. I know it sounds kind of crazy. 
what I ultimately ultimately recommend that you definitely start doing if you're not doing it is do some type of movement that will get your heart rate up. And yes, granted, you know, if you're 99 years old, listen to this, please, you know, don't go and try and, you know, sprint a a five minute marathon. Um, But for most people, you know what you're capable of, and you're probably capable a lot more than you actually think you are. But I would do some kind of high intensity interval type workout, you can just do go into the park. If you're like in the city, you can go to Central Park, thing like that, and just sprint for 10 seconds, walk for 20, sprint for 10, do this for a few minutes. And you're going to burn up so much pent up stress because you have to pay attention to the timing of things, right? If you're doing interval training, you have to pay attention to time, you have to pay attention to form, pay attention to the movement, and wait again for those rounds to keep going. So if you're doing this on a cycle, it's very hard to start thinking about the other things, right? So movement is really, really key. Your brain will love it. And I highly recommend you do it every single day. You don't need to do crazy intensity every single day, but you need to move your body every day and pick two, three, four, five of those days to do something that's going to be intense enough that it'll actually distract you in one way, but it actually keeps you present time conscious in another way while you're doing those stressful things. Because it's easy, you know, for me, I like, I'm like that cartoon where it's like, oh, squirrel, look over there, you know, something going on. So ultimately, by moving and changing it up a little bit, you will start to burn some of those mental calories, if you will, burn some of that mental stress that creates overwhelm. And it'll, it'll let you look at everything and go, great, okay, now I have this to do, this to do, and that to do today. And I'd ultimately recommend, don't try to do everything on your seven day to do list in one day, that will put a lot of pressure on you, which aka creates overwhelm, and I don't want you to create more overwhelm. So see what you have to do, chunk your day out, use tools like Trello, use a piece of paper, use something like Google Keep, um, which these apps are free, you can have a paid version, I believe of Trello a business version, I don't think you would most people do not need it. I don't use it. I use it for lots of really cool things. Um, And, you know, put some good in your mind. You know, one of the things that that I can kind of go down a rabbit hole, I'm a content creator as you are listening right now. I'm also a huge content consumer. And I listen to podcasts, I listen to books, and I end up putting myself in listening to some like political um, things, if you will, like podcasts or videos or whatever it may be. It's easy to put yourself in a lot of unnecessary tension because the way the world goes, there's always tension. There's always tension. We all want peace and we all want happiness and all these things. And I think we can all get that on a very personal level, which will eventually get make it become a bigger level. Though I think when you get yourself into this frustration, this anger, this worry, all these things, it just makes that overwhelm so much worse. So if you're putting good things in your brain, read a book. I have like a, just an example, like we're going to be interviewing this guy. Dean Carnazis, this is a great book for all of you. If you haven't read it, I'm trying to get the glare off it for you. It's called A Runner's High. It is super cool. Dean Carnazis is a badass ultra marathoner. He's like one of the OG guys, original gangster, for those of you who don't, don't know OG, right? The OGs of ultra marathoning. And I'm actually having a conversation with him shortly, and that'll be produced um, very soon as well. So I'm pumped to be able to share that with you. So put good things in your mind, good books, good audio books, Find some. There's a lot of great podcasts. Um, I hope you are going to keep continuing to listen to the Human Powered Life podcast. But you can start to chunk little different things. There are short ones. There are long podcasts, which you can, you know, if you're commuting, it's great to chunk these things down in, you know, a few sessions. It's great to keep your mind uh, going in a positive direction. And then the last thing, it's also good to be quiet. I know I'm telling you to listen to podcasts and read books and meditate and make checklists and all these things, but also that quiet time, the meditation time, the time even before bed, just sit and be grateful for what you've accomplished that day. Be grateful for the people you're around that you love. Be grateful for so many things that you can be grateful for. And I want to leave you with that and take some action today. I'm going to beg you to do something for yourself. Actually, I can't beg you because, you know, I can't even see you. You can see me and hear me, but I ultimately want you to do good for you because I tell you what, The more people that are healthy in this world, the more people that become happy in this world, the more happy people in this world create great things. And happiness and love will will take over everything and we'll we'll be done with all of the BS that's going on in this planet. Well, probably not. 
But I'll tell you what, you're gonna make a huge difference for yourself and those directly around you so we can start creating our little little cocoons of of happiness and love and peace and all these different things. So go forward, charge forward, get through your overwhelm, and we'll see you on the next episode of the Human Powered Life Podcast. And I'll let you know this also if you're still here. Next week is going to be an off week. There's no episode next week. We're taking one week off, and we will see you the week after. Have a great day, evening, or night. We'll see you soon on the next episode. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Human Powered Life Podcast. Make sure to head over to LifestyleLocker.com to check out all the details on the show and to watch part two of this episode, which is only in video format. We also have this audio portion in video format if you want. Once again, I'm your host, Dr. Josh Hant for the Human Powered Life Podcast, and I'm looking forward to staying connected with you as a Human Powered Life Hero. Remember to join the tribe, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.